So we're going to do a tutorial here that talks about how to make um, this particular animated GIF, which is using the uh, Confused Travolta meme um, for a, a moment of the Princess Bride. Um, it employs a few different uh, methods in After Effects. Um, this short bit of video actually has to be stabilized because if you notice like I'm going to put the cursor on the on the pillow here as reference and I'm going to hit play and you'll notice that okay. All right. there's a slight little movement I went from here to here so we're going to have to stabilize that image in order for Travolta to look make sense we're also going to have to make a mat out of this portion of the bedspread to hide Travolta's legs and then we're going to insert Travolta from this uh, green screen piece that someone generated as part of the meme some time ago and they did a nice job of already doing a traveling mat and uh, putting him on a green screen so we can uh, work with him so that ultimately we can make this short little bit all right so some rotoscoping, some image stabilization, and some green screen um, keying, color keying. So I'm going to start over. And so you can see in the actual um, After Effects final bit, we have three layers here. We have the original Princess Bride footage uh, underneath that's been stabilized. And you can see the stabilizer. We have then the confused Travolta footage where is he? Where'd he go? I'm confused. Yeah, oh, thank you. Um, we have the uh, confused Travolta layer, all right, which we can see by itself. And then we have the bedspread layer on the top, all right. And when combined, we get our piece. So it's actually only three layers in an After Effects file, but we're going to start over. And we're going to start over. I had imported, so you'd imagine we have to import the Confused Travolta. We have to import the Princess Bride footage. And uh, that's it. Those are the only two resources we need. We're going to use the, uh, the Princess Bride as the reference for the size of the, uh, the pixel dimensions of the sequence, which can be done by just dragging that file onto the create a new composition icon. And now we have a new composition. Now the first thing we're going to do is we're going to kind of get rid of all this stuff that we, we're not using. We're using only a small uh, portion of the film, which is right about here. and to somewhere around here. And we don't have to be perfect for now. We'll, we'll, we'll fix that afterwards. And we'll estimate the length of the composition. To Ten seconds. All right. Doesn't even have to be that long. So we're going to go to composition settings, and we'll change this from two minutes forty nine seconds to just ten seconds. Ten uh, colon zero zero. All right. And then what we'll do is we'll use the the work area uh, bars to set the part we want to loop. So we want to loop from here Oops. struggle of uh, this screen, there it is. to about 
Let's see. Just to be safe, we'll say here. Well, once we bring in uh, uh, John Travolta's character, we'll know we'll have to when to short it. And so when I hit play now with the space bar, it's going to just work within this space and it'll loop only that area. So whenever I do a little RAM preview, it's going to be just of the area that I've selected. All right. And it has sound right now, too. Hello. Though we're not going to need the sound. So next, let's, uh, let's bring in John Travolta, all right, so we can position him. Um, he's on a top layer, and we can see he's, uh, he's shorter than the length of these, the looped area, so we'll have to fix that at some point. We can bring him over, at least to the starting point, and we can imagine resizing him, all right. You know, I'm holding the shift key so that He's, uh, he's about the size of the uh, grandfather, but we still need to uh, figure out where he's going to go. Um, and we're going to use a, a color key. Not this one. Sorry, I want to make sure I use the right. Which effect did we use? We used a color key, right? In fact, we'll just copy this one. Copy. Paste. And we'll delete this one. Um, and we can reset, this is set to, uh, we can change the, the, the color and you can see how is it, 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 it basically uh, will make transparent any color that you choose. Um, the nice thing is what we want to use is we use the color picker and we'll be able to click on where that color is and you'll then uh, be able to see And you can also see where he, John Travolta becomes transparent. And then you can uh, work with tolerances to see how fuzzy the edge of the line will be, as well as you can work to thin the edge as, as well. It's, a, it's just kind of a, uh, and then finally do a little bit of feathering of the edges uh, too, all right? So it blurs. And you can, so you can see you have to make some choices to include various different greens. And you can see this is very stoppy, so it looks like you know, Travolta's getting a little, a little uh, fuzzy at the edges, and so maybe that's too much feather, uh, too much thinning at the edge. All right, that's pretty good. Teeny bit more feather. All right, his nose gets cut off a teeny bit, but that'll have to do, okay? So now we can see um, how this is working, right? And he disappears because we haven't uh, made a choice yet. Now there's two things to, we're going to have to deal with. One of the things, as I mentioned, is the bed's moving slightly. All right, You can see it right here. It moves if you follow the cursor. And so we're going to have to deal, otherwise Travolta's going to look a little unnatural in that space. So let's turn Travolta off for a moment and we're going to work with the motion tracker. All right, uh, We highlight the layer that we want to motion track and I'm going to try to pick a, a space, a, a spot that I think has a high pixel contrast, which I think this bed, this corner of the be, uh, bed frame is going to probably be very good. Um, and I'm going to put the window, if it's not already, into uh, the workspace into motion tracking. All right. Um, so if you're in another space, you know you can you can be in a workspace that's just basic animation, and we are going to change to motion tracking. All right. And what we're going to do 
is choose to uh, stabilize motion. And this brings up the tracker, and there's a lot of, we're gonna, track motion can be used to, uh, say if you want to track motion for the sake of, say we wanted Travolta to follow camera, and so he moved with camera, but instead I'm just gonna stabilize. So we're gonna say stabilize motion, and you can see what it does is it creates this little tracking point, all right? And um, you can move this tracking point around, you can resize it, you know, the, you choose a point to track, by a box, a point as in an area to track, and then you, uh, you have uh, a following area around it, all right? And so we wouldn't want to follow the, 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 the grandfather because he obviously is, is constantly moving. We want to follow an area that we think should be staying still, such as the corner of the, this bed stand. And it doesn't have to be this large. We can make this much smaller. Because the, the, in the, what's important is that this is a nice contrasty area so that when we, when we go to track this motion, it's going to see the movement. And you can see how it's moving, and it's going to hopefully follow those pixels as it moves across, all right? Especially as we get all the way over here, okay? So once you position your, your tracker, then you, you hit the, you, you bring your uh, time indicator to the beginning point where you want to start tracking motion, and then you hit play. And you can see it's already uh, following that particular point as it moves across frames. And you can kind of watch it. And it'll go beyond our, our playback area, which is fine. And then that goes off frame and it loses it, and so say stop. So you can see it starts to fail as that portion went off frame. But that's fine. We're not going to use that part. But the part we want, it did a very good job. We can hit apply and say OK. And now you can see that the frame is going to work, is going to move within the composition to keep the image stable, all right? And it creates all these keyframes, movement keyframes, effectively, all right? So we need to uh, re-render and so you can see the, the frame is moving, all right? And so we've, we've successfully tracked that bit of motion. It was uh, stabilized that, that frame, that, that minor camera movement that was going on as it was anticipating following the character as he moves away. And you can see it's like, oh, that was, that was the point. Is like whoever's the camera operator was getting preparing for the grandfather to walk and the camera position to change as a result of the, uh, the grandfather's uh, uh, position blocking change. So now when we put Confused Revolta back in in this space, uh, his character is now going to be um, put in a position. Whoops. I want to make sure we select him. We can position him and approximately resize him based on the character. So I'm going to, I can put him here and he can look like he's confused, like the, the grandfather's confused. So we have. Confused grandfather, and we have confused. And there, we can position, I think, when I originally did this. So I can move this position of Travolta based on which part of this action I want to use, right? And they kind of look away from one another and then they leave. All right, and so I can reset my work area right around Confused Travolta so he never disappears. And zoom in to make sure that that's right. Yep. And so now we have one last thing to do. We have to work with uh, the bed. So we want to hide Travolta's body behind this bed. So how do we do that? 
Well, we effectively need another piece of the film, the original Pritch's Bride footage, and we're going to have to mat out everything except for a portion of the, at least this portion of the bedspread. All right. And we're going to use uh, the pen tool to do this in this in this particular situation because it's relatively it's a relatively stable bedspread. Um, the boy is not moving around, so it's 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 very simple. We we're going to Command C copy the uh, Princess Bride footage, Command V paste it, and put it on the top layer. And so now John Travolta is hidden behind this piece of footage, but we're going to now draw a mat of the area we want to see. Okay, So we're going to open this particular layer separately. So we're looking at just this layer. And we're going to draw a mat around this bedspread so that Uh, that's all we see, and Travolta's legs will be hidden. Okay, we're going to use the pen tool to draw this mat, and the pen tool is familiar uh, for for people that uh, are used to drawing. Oops, it wants this to be in the composition. My fault. Be on this layer. It's annoying. All right, uh, to make curves, all right? When you click and drag, remember you make a curve and a point versus hard points if you don't drag, all right? So to follow the curve of this blanket, we're just going to make a bunch of points with these handles. And then when we get past the point of the grandfather, we can just make these very big points and bring it around. And now we see Travolta again because we have the mat. All right. So now we can see the mat on or off. The mat's on, the mat's off. All right. And so we have this teeny bit of space. And when we zoom in, you can see it's a very hard edge All right, of the mat. And if you want to see the effects of the mat, uh, we have now we have our mask here. And we can, within that mask, we can make a, a feather, all right? Or we could expand the mask so it, it goes further out, but we don't want to. It's on a nice, it's a it's very nice line, so there's no reason to make it bigger. So we'll make this like, say, a four pixel feather so it just softens the edge a little bit, all right? And when you click away from it, you can see that softened edge kind of matches the, the footage. Now, with that done, that's, that's pretty much it. That does, that does our, let's which watch, we'll zoom in. Watch the mat. Now we could do some work. I did a sloppy job of that uh, green screen key. Um, and then the last thing we'd have to do is we, we'd have to consider uh, we need to crop this composition. All right, we can do that in the settings. All right, um, and we could say we could change the width and height. Say we 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 change the width to 1800 and the height. to 950. And that would get rid of, say, that those pieces that are, are a problem. And then maybe we'd resultingly switch Travolta, move Travolta around because he's in a bad position. He's not in the best spot. Maybe we'd move him over here. All right. So you can make decisions about where he is, right?
So we're no longer working in HD. So you could do the other thing, which would be to enlarge everything if you wanted to. We could take all of them. So I could instead select all layers and then now make them bigger, all right? so that our frame, we're still in 1080p. And now we just got rid of the areas that were cropped by the motion mat. And you can make some choices based on, on that. We could choose maybe around, oops, shift key to keep aspect ratios. And we can check it and see how it looks, see if there's any mistakes. All right, and we're done. We're going to add this to the render queue. We're going to uh, give this as a uh, Travolta as you wish. All right, hit render, and we can see a meatball recipe. All right. <laughs> and that's it. And then we could import that to Photoshop and make it a GIF and loop it and uh, get a sense of how well it worked. Obviously, I, I think I could do some more work on the the keying and, 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 and the edges of Travolta's head, but that's it, all right? So put this one up.